Okay, what's up guys? Welcome to, well, I think this would be, I think it's the, is it the first live of 2023? I don't think so. I think I've done a few live streams um, this year already. Um, however, it is actually the first live stream since I turned 30 years old, so I'm actually 30 now. And uh, so, thanks for the birthday wishes. I know a lot of you, um, a lot of you sent me lovely messages to me. I got um, some gifts, which is really nice. Thank you very much. Um, some of you just sent lovely, uh, lovely letters, and uh, I got some in the mail. I got some uh, amazing messages, so thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Um, very kind words. So we'll do a live stream today, um, as per usual. When I do live streams, we'll just do question and answer. What's up guys, how's everyone? Um, how's everything? Happy birthday again, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. So, uh, you know, it's funny, I was, I was looking back at um, the last uh, 10 years of my life from the age of 20 to 30 years old, looking back on um, what I've done your birthday cake was awesome. Yeah, somebody, uh, the hotel gifted me a, uh, a little birthday cake, which was nice. It was very, very, very nice. Um, so I was looking back on the last 10 years of what, I, what I've done and what I've, what I've been through, and it's, uh, it's a lot, I think, from Omaha, Nebraska. How you doing? And uh, for those of you who don't know my story, I just want a quick recap. I'll give it to you. So from the age of about 13 years old, probably a bit younger, actually, from 13 to... 21 uh, I played drums every single day so I would sit it I I I had a where I lived in Melbourne Australia I used to have a shed uh, my parents old shed which is now like a bedroom or something but I used to have a shed out there I used to have a big acoustic drum kit an electric drum kit um, and I would go out there and uh, put these headphones over my ears and blast this music and play these drums and I would have hearing protection in sometimes but most of the time I wouldn't um, and when I wasn't doing that, I'd be riding the bus to university. I was studying at, studying at Music University. I studied at um, NIMH or something, which was crap. Um, I studied at um, Box Hill University. And I studied ultimately at um, Victorian College of the Arts, which at the age of about 21, um, I had to actually leave because my tinnitus and hypercusis was so bad. So that was... Uh, at the age of 21, and that's really where this whole, was it 21 or 22? I forget the date, I have to look at my um, registration papers for VCA. But um, no, it would have been 22, it was 22, because it's been eight years. Yeah, no, no, 21, 21. And so I got tinnitus, uh, hypercusis, had to drop out of university, became an alcoholic, became addicted to marijuana, basically. Took anything to get my hands on to quell the pain, hid it from my family. Um, by the way, if you want the extended story of this, Bianca's Holistic Way, she's going to be releasing a video soon. Um, and uh, it's basically her interviewing me, and I talk about this for like an hour straight, tell my whole entire story. It's fascinating. You're gonna, I don't think I've ever told the whole thing from start to finish. She's going to put it on her YouTube channel and then mine. So I had tinnitus and hypercusis. For three and a half years, I tried to habituate. I tried to listen to my ENT. I tried to listen to the morons on the forums. I tried to, you know, I was like, should I go to um, Switzerland and get stem cells? Should I take this medication? Should I try and sign up? I tried to sign up to all these different drug trials. Of course, we now know they're all nonsense, right? Like, if you're still thinking that there's some sort of drug trial or drug that's going to come out, that's going to help you, you still, and there's nothing wrong with this, there's nothing wrong with this, you still haven't figured out that tinnitus is caused by multiple things. It's a domino theory, as I call it. It's like a small domino when you're young, might be like the childhood jabs and medications that you take. Then a second domino is like the baby formula shit. Then a third domino is the fact that your mother never let you play in the dirt, so your immune system's buggered up. Then you get some sort of parasite, which you never deal with because doctors never learn about parasites. Maybe you get a mold infection. Then the stress of school, lack of sunlight, you're putting sunscreen on. Um, you go through puberty, you get all these problems with, you know, relationships and you're, you get social anxiety and blah, blah, blah. Maybe you pick up an instrument and that contributes to it too. Um, then you get a knock to the head in football one day and you don't get into the university you want and your boyfriend breaks up with you, your girlfriend breaks up with you or your father dies or your mother dies or your brother dies or your dog dies or you lose your job, you get fired and COVID. It's like they're all just, it's all just building and building and building 
until you get tinnitus. And so when people say, and it's, it's silly, but you, should, you shouldn't listen to these people because they're a little bit lost, but there are still people who say, oh, you know, lifestyle changes won't do anything. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to learn to live with it. It's totally unfixable. But what you should do is there's a new drug trial coming out of XYZ. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. How is the pill going to fix parasites, mold, posture problems, stress for relationship, lack of sunlight, not enough grounding, using Bluetooth headphones, not sleeping properly, hating your life, being socially lonely, um, drinking toxic water, not having a shower filter. The list goes on, living in a high um, EMF environment, the list goes on and on and on. So someone please tell me how on God's green earth or Allah's green earth or Buddha's green earth or whatever, how a, a pill or an electric stimuli is going to fix the world's tinnitus. Don't get me wrong, it can help some people and it has. But it does help some people here and there. And that's great, as I said, but it really doesn't help the majority of people. Every time you hear there's a new drug and it's bullshit. There's a new drug and it's bullshit. There's this amazing doctor of all his qualifications from Sweden and it's all bullshit. You gotta understand guys, the only reason these people get the money to conduct their studies to find a cure for tinnitus is because the investors want some fucking money. The market for tinnitus is huge, but there's not ever going to be a pill to fix it. That's why if you look at the market for tinnitus, what is it? It's habituation. That's why all these doctors and all these experts and all these people on, in forums and whatnot are telling you just to habituate because that's what the experts say, because that's what the experts, there's, there's no, that's where the money is. The money is in, in the doctors getting told by drug reps or whoever's representing them or medical companies will go into the ENT's office, take them out for dinner and spend like $5,000 um, in a week and say, look, we just want you to promote these earpieces. These are the best ones, whatever. Like, you know, who wouldn't say that, right? And every time you sell them, we'll give you 500, 200, 3,000 dollars, whatever it is. You know, they'll, sometimes they'll even give the ENTs more money than the earpieces are worth and they'll lose money. The companies on the front end, that's called a loss leader. The big, big smart businesses do that. Um, they'll give the earpieces, you know, they'll give more money than they make. So the ENT will get paid, like, you know, the customer will pay, let's say $5,000 Australian for the earpieces, right? And then they'll give the ENT $5,000. But um, what will happen is, as part of the earpieces, in the future, they'll have to replace them and tweak them. And there's also the brain retraining and the therapy and the medications, which usually, aside from the medications often, but the rest of the stuff, these companies have their paws in, so then they know they'll make the money back. And what ENT wouldn't want to, you know, set up these earpieces for $5,000? I mean, the money they would make is crazy. Rebecca says, I've noticed that too. The few people I've talked to were told to habituate. Yeah, it's because they're, it's just a, it's just a line of command. It's not a proper education. These, these, uh, it, you know, people are just, some people see it, some people don't, but it's not a proper education that these doctors receive. They just get told what to say. Now, don't get me wrong, they understand the physiology and anatomy. You could probably get Sippy across from an ENT and they'd be able to point out the, the names of the ear better than I would. In fact, I'm almost sure they'd be able to. But then it goes, okay, congratulations on that. That's good, that's great, that's good to know. It's good to know this stuff. I know it too, you know it too, great. You probably know it a little bit better. I'm sure you do, truly, truly. But now tell me how to fix it. How, to, how do you fix tinnitus? How do you fix this? How do you fix hyperacusis? How do you fix a vestibular problem? How do you fix this? How do you fix that? And they'll go, well, we don't fix it. We just teach people how to habituate. Well, then it doesn't really matter if you know what everything's called if you can't fix it, can you? Can posture affect tinnitus? Absolutely it can, absolutely. Rosetta says, hi, Liam. Um, uh, my 23.14 second says, do you know what could cause sleep to not be good? Hope you know what I mean. Yeah, what can cause sleep issues? Yeah, good question, a lot of things. Too much blue light before bed, drinking caffeine or eating caffeinated products, um, not getting AM and PM sunlight, sleeping in a room that's too well lit, sleeping in a room that's too warm, um, sleeping in a high EMF environment, that's one that will do you. Those are a couple of, if you can, 
that's like a month's worth of work to fix all that sort of stuff right there. So just focus on that. I have indigestion problems, sir. What is the reason? Well, I mean, you know, I kind of focus on tinnitus, but this is, um, you know what? Why don't we talk a little bit about gallstones? Let's talk about gallstones because there's a couple of clients who have been on my mind um, uh, recently and you'll know who you are, but I won't say your name. Um, just because I've been thinking about, because you've been stuck. And it's a lovely French girl. I think you're from France. I apologize if you're not. And uh, like a UK bloke, the kind of guy that I usually hang out with. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, guys, post them now and I'll get to them when I finish the stories. Please post them. But give me all the questions. So let's talk about indigestion. So first things first, let's go through the obvious things. If you're eating, you know, if you're eating KFC and you're, you know, eating processed sugars and you're drinking coffee and you're drinking green smoothies, it's just water by the way, and you're, you know, just taking a whole bunch of medications which will give you heartburn. I'm not saying stop your medications, I'm just pointing out what's happening. And you're drinking soft drink and tea and all this shit, then you're gonna get indigestion. So first things first, let's remove the potential causes of indigestion. So let's imagine you've got rid of those things. It's been, you haven't eaten any of them for a month and you still have indigestion. So you have diarrhea, constipation, heartburn, things like that. Once again, speak to your doctor or your gastroenterologist. I'm just telling you what I do with my clients. So I had these two clients, uh, the, the French girl um, and the UK guy. Two, two very different people from very different um, walks of life. And they've been stuck. You know, the, the girls was following my advice for, I think like six months or something and really not getting any solid results. And when that happens, I know that's usually one of a couple of things. It's usually, um, and the same with the guy. And I, I, I always know it's one of a couple of things. It's either a root canal, either it's breast implants, it's a mesh problem, it's EMF, it's parasite, it's mold. It's not something that they're doing now. And by the way, it's, I don't like the phrase, oh, they're doing it wrong. I've never said that about any of my clients and I never will because that's nonsense. That's, that's, that's like ridiculous. But there's just something that we're missing and you know, it's my responsibility to figure it out. And this is what I've kind of pinpointed as, so I'll say it again. I wanna make another thing clear too. When someone, if you're let's say 30, 40 years old and you've been and when I say destroying, I don't mean overtly. When I say to someone, you know, you've been destroying your health for 15 years, I don't mean you drink every day and you do drugs and you used to be a heroin addict and you lived on the streets and you drink five cans of soft drink every day. I mean, you've been around blue light too much, your posture's terrible, you've been using Bluetooth headphones for three hours a day, you've been drinking a green smoothie because you think it's healthy, you choose the, you choose the oat milk instead of the um, real milk. You choose pasteurized dairy over raw dairy. Most people don't do well in dairy at all. You know what I'm saying, that sort of thing. You're just living a general life that all humans live, which is fundamentally destructive. And so it can take some time to reverse the underlying issues that are causing tinnitus because tinnitus, hyperacusis, polestar, tinnitus, vertigo, Meniere's disease. And what I'm finding now, hearing loss and visual snow um, are all reversible, by the way. Um, and they're all just symptoms. And by the way, you probably saw it, there was a lovely lady who posted her hearing results and her hearing is getting much, much better after following my advice. So, you know, there's, there's, there's so much proof that tinnitus and hearing loss is not for life that it's ridiculous. It's just, it's preposterous. Whenever, whenever anyone says, you know, tinnitus is not for life, it's, sorry, tinnitus is for life. I'll get back to my story about two people in a second. I, I just look at them and I go, I would be so fascinated to live a, a day in your shoes and just see how you come to that conclusion because either you haven't seen my stuff, which is silly because you're talking to me, or second, you've seen my stuff and you just can't accept it because you're so brainwashed and you have such a hard on for authority that you can't accept the fact that everything you think you know about the medical field and everything you think you know about the body and everything that you've been telling every single person you've ever met with tinnitus is complete horseshit. All of it is horseshit. Anyway, 
So it's just it's a shocker. It's a shocker to me. If I when I had tinnitus back years ago, I, I've I've had silence for about coming up to coming up to five years now, roughly five and a half years. I'm, I've turned thirty. For those of you joining us, I turned thirty two days ago. So congratulations to me. Happy birthday to me. Um, so back to the two stories. So uh, you know, I was looking at these two people and saying, what's going on? Because I, I trust them. I know they're doing the advice. The, the advice they're asking lots of great questions. They're putting in the work. And so I said to them, look. Uh, it's not your fault. It's nothing wrong you're doing. I think you're doing everything perfectly. But, and I spoke about this in, um, in my talk with Bianca. I said, there's two aspects to silencing tinnitus. This is what, this is what I've figured out. Okay, this is, this is um, I'll stamp my name on this one because this is what I've kind of figured out. And this goes for really any chronic disease ever. There's aspect one, right? And there's aspect two. So aspect two are the things that you do on a daily basis using the headphones, avoiding the sun, putting on toxic makeup, using toxic hair stuff, having a shower without a shower filter, not sleeping properly, not exercising, um, things like uh, choosing the oat milk over the regular milk if you're still drinking coffee, which you probably shouldn't be doing, drinking coffee, drinking too much alcohol, um, you know, uh, not moving. There's movement and then there's exercise. I spoke about this before. You should be moving as much as you're exercising. That's what people, people don't realize. Guys, to give you a tip right now, if your idea of being a fit and active person is you sit down for 16 hours a day. Let's say you sit down for 16 hours a day and you walk for half an hour a day in total and you um, go to the gym for 40 minutes and work out strenuously. It's not good enough. One of the best things I think that people with tinnitus can get is a Fitbit. You know, I'm not really for like the electronics on your body and stuff, but if you can walk around with one of those and like track your steps, that's amazing. It's really, really good. Walk out in the sun. If you have to use headphones, use wired headphones. I still use wired headphones. I actually, I have to be honest with you, I borrowed my uh, friend's, uh, uh, what do you call them? The Bluetooth, the Apple earbuds, the, the wireless earbuds the other day at the gym, and they are convenient. They're really convenient, but I could literally feel my head getting hot from using them. So the radiation is, it's not worth it. So figure out another way. Um, all that sort of stuff. So the aspect, that's aspect two, the things that you're doing today that are contributing, exacerbating or prolonging your tinnitus. So what's, what's keep making sure your tinnitus stays there, what's making it worse, and what's making it stay there for longer, right? Those things. And you can look at this all on my page and I'm telling you about, I just, I just riddled off so much stuff that you can really use, which is, which is you know, it's great. Tulutam Shum, you're welcome. Or Kun Li in Thai. Trying to learn Thai now that I live in Bangkok. Anyway, then there's aspect one. And I tell people to start with aspect two and then end with aspect one. And this is gonna be in a silence course, but I'm giving it to you now because I actually, you know, I actually give a shit. Aspect one is the things that happened in your past which you haven't emotionally dealt with, physically dealt with, or medically dealt with. Emotionally dealt with. Whether you were, and I have many clients like this, Sally, the world is, can be a, a harsh place. If you've been sexually abused as a child, if you're a victim of domestic abuse in the past for women and men, um, if you, you know, your father died a long time ago, or your mother died, or your ch child died, and you haven't been able to work through that, those things matter. Okay, so that's emotionally. Physically would be things like um, posture, neck issues, chiropractic problems, something that took a long time to fester, things like that. And medically is really where the most important stuff is, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, the emotional stuff is very important, but... The medical stuff is kind of my bread and butter. That's really what I focus on and I find it. It's got the most like bang for your buck. That would be things like uh, root canals, dental infections, mesh, breast implants, uh, mold, parasites. But there is one more, and this comes back to my digestive question that I had before. There's one more which I haven't really spoken about and that's gallstones. This is a very important one. And I gotta tell you, the amount of times that I have had people come to me and say, you know, it's, I've been following your advice perfectly and I must just be different and I, it's not gonna work for me and everyone else is getting 
results and I'm not getting, and I'm not saying this, like the, the persons are like, oh, poor me. They're not like that. They're like, Liam, like, let's, let's do this. Let's, I'm really doing this. Let's be constructive. This is what I've done. I'm just, they're just voicing their concerns. I'm just a little bit worried. It's not going to work for me as you would think. You know, if you came to my patient and saw these results and you did exactly the same thing that you thought they did and you were getting any results, you would think the same thing. If you, whether you were trying to make money, become fit, you know, whatever the thing is that you're trying to do, become a better artist or whatever, and you're doing the same thing as everyone else and it's not working for you, you would think, well, the, common, the, the only interchangeable thing must be yourself, as you would, as a logically thinking person would be. But that's when we bring out the big guns. Now, I mentioned before that I get people to do what is an aspect two first because it's cheaper, it's, it's less invasive, and it's quick. It's much easier, wouldn't you agree, to quit coffee and alcohol than it is to get a root canal out. And I have, and do you see what I'm saying? And I have a lot of people, by the way, who still have root canals, who still have breast implants, who get silence. So don't think like, oh my God, I'm a girl with three root canals and I've got, you know, bolt-ons and everything and I've got to get them off. You just don't. But you might have to. The whole thing that breast implants is a good idea and is safe is, is not correct at all. Once again, who's telling you that they're safe? <laughs> the fucking plastic surgeons who want to make, what, $12,000 to $6,000 from them? And I've got to be honest with you, ladies, we don't really care that much. We really don't. We really, really men don't really care. that. We might like gawk over pictures and stuff, but we'll, we'll, we'll still like you as long as you're sweet and nice and, you know, you like us back. We'll like you, you know, men are simple. We really are. Anyway, at that heartwarming moment. So I go to these two people. Um the lovely French girl and the UK bloke, which uh, I like them both a lot, actually. I, I talk to them a lot, I like them a lot. <laughs> and I'm worried about them because, you know, I don't want them to lose hope. I'm not worried that, I'm not worried that they're not gonna get better. I'm worried that they're gonna lose hope and, and stop. The UK guy, we were talking about gallstones and things like that. He's got no root canals, all this sort of stuff. And I said to the UK guy, you know, I mentioned him. I think he saw, I, th I actually think I didn't mention to him. He saw it in the group, but we, you know, we talk about it together in this private group we have. And he started doing gallstone flushes. If you, if you don't know what a gallstone flush is, don't just go out and do it. Speak to your doctor, speak to a health expert. Um, and you can go look up Andreas Moritz, the amazing gallbladder and liver flush, and you can learn more about it. Oh, so we a posture. He starts doing gallstone flushes. He's done two or three and his tinnitus has already gone down but it was stuck for like six months. Wasn't budging at all. Now it's gone down. So, what it, and the, the girl, and uh, I won't say your name here but I hope you don't mind me just telling a little bit about your story, was a, I think she was a vegan slash vegetarian for eight years. And gallstones are made of oxalate. They're, they're little green stones. So, let's backpedal a bit. What is a gallstone, okay? Uh, what is a gallbladder, what is a gallstone? What part does a liver pay, play? What part does this play in digestion? So you eat food, okay, Just you eat meat, okay? Because when you eat plants, you're not digesting the plants. Microbes in your stomach are eat, eating the plants and, and giving you out what nutrients they can if they can break through the fiber and everything, which they usually can't, it's nonsense. So you eat meat, you eat eggs, liver, steak, pork, fish, shrimp, Whatever you want to have, you eat that, okay? So you eat a steak, like I eat like four steaks a day, hence why the, the nice big bit of muscles there and sweat, you love it. <laughs> anyway, so you eat a steak, it goes down your gastrointestinal tract, goes into your small intestines, right? Now the way that meat gets broken down, the meat and the fat, no matter what animal it's from, no matter if it's eggs or whatever, could be bone marrow, is your gallbladder and your liver secrete bile from bile ducts, all right? Now this bile is made up of cholesterol, it's made up of bile salts and a couple of other things which I forget. And it breaks down the, uh, it secretes, so, so the gallbladder and the liver both secrete bile into the small intestine where it breaks it down, moves through your intestines, it breaks it down so that by the time, there's other processes too, by the time it gets to your colon, you can poo out what looks like poo and there's no there's barely any nutrients left and you've absorbed everything you know like dr grundy said the inside of your body is basically hollow you know it's basically hollow and everything is all the nutrients and, and minerals just get sucked out that's how it happens very fascinating in my opinion you might think it's gross but i think it's fascinating what happens is over time through oxalate consumption so plants 
um, alcohol consumption, excessive carbohydrate consumption, um, pharmaceutical medications will do this too, is your body develops these gallstones made up of oxalic acid. So you've probably heard me talk about oxalic crystals before, uh, made up of cholesterol and bile salts. And they get stuck in the bile ducts of the uh, both the liver and the gallbladder. By the way, if you don't have a gallbladder, that's fine. You can still, it's still okay. You'll have to take ox bile, ox bile probably for the rest of your life. Sorry, but that's just is what it is. So anyway, what happens is his bile, these bile ducts where the bile is supposed to come through gets blocked. So you have the meat coming through here. You've just eaten it, you've just eaten it. Coming through here, you have the bile ducts here. Here's where the gallbladder is, here's the bile ducts. And these are filled, All these, there's many different bile ducts like this, looks like this. They're jam packed and blocked with stones. So they can't, the bile cannot get out, you can't break down the meat. You need that meat, you need the nutrients, you need the minerals. Um, you need the fat soluble vitamins, okay? To feed what? The mitochondria in your body, muscle development. Um, you need the cholesterol because every single cell in your body is encased uh, with cholesterol. You need the meat. So this is why people will say, and lots of people will say to me, you know, Liam, I, I'm eating more meat and I started to slowly do it. Um, and I can reduce the vegetables and carbohydrates and I get most of my nutrients from meat and I'm losing too much weight. Or my tinnitus is going down, but I'm a little bit pale and I don't feel that good. And they're kind of stuck, like, what do I do? Do I eat more meat or less meat? Like, because my tinnitus is getting better, but I'm, I'm losing too much weight. You don't do either. You go back to eating more plants, okay? Keep your weight up, just keep, by the way, speak to your doctor about this, please. Stay healthy, keep your weight up. And you can do, if you want to, it's up to you, you can do a gallbladder flush. Once again, Andreas Moritz talks about this. You can do it if you want. It's up to you. I've done a couple in my, in my time and stones have come out. It's very interesting. But this is one of those things that when people get stuck, this is one of the things that usually really helps move the needle. And I know as well, I have an Australian friend who is stuck as well. And I, I don't know if he's done it yet, but I want him to give, it, to give this a go too. But again, it's up to you. Speak to your doctor. So anyway, that's aspect one and two. That's kind of how that works. There's more to, more to it than this when it comes to beating tinnitus, but this is the basic gist. Let's see if we have any questions. Is gluten healthy? No. Show us my bottle. It's made from glass. See? Yeah, drinking from plastic's not a good idea. I still do it sometimes when I have to, but it's not a good idea. Get all those phthalates and BPA. I thought I was lost because I got tinnitus from postpartum anxiety, but I've already lowered it from an eight to a two since January 1st. Your course works. Fantastic. Congratulations on the baby. I'm very happy for you. And congratulations on the result. Let us all know when you get silence. It's gonna be fantastic. Happy belated birthday. Well, thank you very much. Um, hi Liam, what vegetables and fruits do you recommend? Look, I recommend you choose whichever ones you want, but I recommend you, you just reduce them. Probably stay away from the nightshades and the high oxalate vegetables. That's what I would do. Curious on thoughts on lion's mane supplement. It's the mushroom. Yeah, I'd probably suggest instead things like iodine, selenium, CoQ10, uh, methylene blue, but you know, it's up to you what you take. AirPods, that's what it was, yeah. How do you know if you need a gallstone cleanse? Well, if you're having trouble digesting meat or you're losing too much weight, it usually is a good sign. There are certain things you can do, like you can get certain scans and such, but as far as I'm concerned, if you're like over the age of 17, you probably have a decent amount of gallstones. If you're getting good results and your tinnitus is getting lower, don't do it. Don't. There's no need to do these things like 
you know, I always tell people say, oh, I want to jump right in and do like a dry fast or a gallstone cleanse, or I want to, you know, get a root canal out. It's like, maybe just don't do that and focus on the easy stuff first and then do that for a couple of months and see how you go. I mean, you can do what you want with your life, but that's my suggestion. Does dry first fasting versus intermittent help to reduce tinnitus? They, they both can help. It's up to you. Does dry fasting help gallstones? I actually have heard that it does, but um, I think that just doing a cleanse would be much better. I am one month into the program. Can I start doing a dry fast? You look, you can do anything you want to, but if you want my suggestion of what would be the most appropriate for just people in general, because I don't know much about your situation, I would say not yet. Don't do it yet. What is a good breakfast that is low in salt and high in meat? Well, I guess um, unsalted steak and eggs probably go to. What do you suggest as an energy boost and a caffeine alternative? <laughs> Sunlight, sex and exercise. That's always my go-to. Seriously, it's the best. Oh, this is a good question. Is LDN, low dose naltrexone, helpful because it reduces inflammation? Dr. Rx because mold and bar Dr. recommended because of mold and Bartonella. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, naltrexone is a drug that's used to block opioid receptors um, in people who are addicted to you know alcohol and, and drugs and certain things. But through research they've found that very low doses of it can actually help improve health markers a lot. And I was actually contacted by a doctor from Russia, I think, who specializes in studying and he's got a he's got a podcast called the LDN podcast or the low dose naltrexone podcast. I can't really speak on it um, because I haven't really had much experience with it. But um, I've seen some pretty compelling things like naltrexone and things like that. Found out too late gallbladder removal won't fix underlying problem. Do you think the liver needs to be looked at? Well, the liver can get gallstones too. I would read the book by Andreas Moritz and you probably need to take ox bile for the rest of your life, I would say. Is Ensure bad for tinnitus? I don't know what that is, sorry. Your, your option on MSG. My opinion on MSG, probably don't eat it. Eat low in, in, good spelling guys, eat low inflation foods, eat low inflammation foods. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be meat, basically. And yeah, I agree with that, definitely. I 100% agree with that sentiment. All right. So, um, I guess we're coming to the end of the questions and the end of the live stream here. But... Uh, yeah, so the course updates coming. I know I keep saying that. The application which is coming, I'm sure you've seen um, me put some pictures up. That's where these live streams are eventually going to be migrated to. It's going to be awesome. You have your own private journal. You can track everything. You can create groups. It's a place where you can go and get help and advice um, without morons coming in and saying, no, nah, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. You can't fix it. So it's just, it's just silly. It's silly. The good news is that whenever someone says there's nothing you can do on most other people's pages and forums now, um, people who've followed my advice and gotten silence will come in and say, well, hold on a minute. That's, that's not true. That's not correct. People will say, I had tinnitus for 10 years and I followed Liam's advice and I got silence in six months. You know, so it's good to see. The, 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 whenever like some influencer somewhere posts a picture of themselves being like, I have tinnitus and so on and so forth, invariably or usually you know i've got followers from all over the world some a handful of my followers will also follow those people and they'll all I'll, like i'll always get a, a like it'll say like you know 20 people tagged you in a post and it's 20 separate people who don't know each other tagging me in someone else's post because they said they had tinnitus and there's nothing you can do so it's very cool do you recommend the nac supplement yes i do actually um, so no coffee, even if it's decaf and tested for mold and pesticides. Yeah, well, 
first of all, decaf coffee doesn't mean it has no caffeine at all. It's just less caffeine. It's a marketing scam. And secondly, coffee is coffee. It's a bean. It's, it's full of oxalate. So yeah, so guys, when I say just do something, I mean, I can't tell you what to do, but when you say, yeah, but was it, no, there's, there's not really any like, yeah, buts. it's just, okay, I'll just stop doing it. Because you know, you've got to think how badly do you want it? Because if I tell you to drink coffee and you're like, well, what if I just have one cup a day? Then it's like, all right, so when you're in a status of love, when you're really ready to just get silence and follow my advice, you just say, okay. I mean, cause it's just fucking coffee. It's easy to get rid of, right? I said I would love. Sometimes other sounds and goodness me. Sometimes other sounds enhance my tinnitus when I'm sleeping with the fan on my ears or brain lock onto the whooshing sound and it gets louder and, and louder like a ringing. I don't know how to explain. Yeah, that can happen. But that can still go away too. Other sounds sometimes in, okay, well that's, sup brother. What's up, man? How are you? How's things? Guys, for the people sending the live video requests, I'm not going to bring on anyone to today to do a live. You know, I'm not doing that. But you can type your messages. <laughs> Is removing the molar after root canal fail enough to heal? Well, it's certainly a step in the right direction, but for people who, you know, I have a guy at the moment who's been following my advice for another guy uh, for a couple of months. And then I, you know, we're talking a little bit about his situation and it turned out that he actually got tinnitus like a month after a root canal. And before that he was totally healthy. Um, and I said to him, look, man, like you've been following my advice for a while. You're getting, it goes up, down, you're getting some silence, but it just keeps shooting back up. So, you know, I said to him, you should consider the root canal and see what you think. And if you want to get rid of it, you can. I probably think he will. And I, if that was me, I, if I was him, I'd get rid of it too, but it's up to him, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, the spelling, man. Yeah, lion's mane. Yeah, look, I mean, it's a great way to get a candida infection or, um, you know, help mold grow in your body. I'm not a huge fan of it. Thoughts on adaptogens? I don't really know much about it at all, to be totally honest with you. Hi, I have tinnitus, but also chronic fatigue syndrome. I can't exercise or stay in the presence of sun as I get breathless. Any tips for dealing with this? Yeah, that sounds like it's more up uh, Bianca's holistic way, Ali, her Ali. Cause she used to have Lyme and chronic, chronic fatigue. Um, so if you go and visit her page and send her a message, she should be able to help you with the chronic fatigue. Glad you said that I had stopped. Stopped doing what? The lion's mane? Yeah, I don't know about that stuff. For Meniere's disease or endo lymph high drops over, Jesus, overseas, it's popular to prescribe antivirals. Yeah, I don't know about that. In Australia and maybe Western countries, they don't belong V in this treatment at all. What, what, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I wouldn't give antivirals for high drops. That sounds fucking crazy. Glad you asked. I use isogenics adaptogen. Okay. So we'll wrap it up here. We'll wrap it up here, guys. But um, if anyone has any last questions, I'm going to go boxing now. I'm going to beat some people up and get beat up. Literally ice cold therapy, fasting, proper diet, listen to Liam's course and you will get silence. Mitch, I was, I was mentioning you before, the Australian. Have you um, done a, I know this is public, but have you done a gallstone cleanse, Mitch, before? Have fun, yeah, I will.
that's the other thing. If you're a if you're a man, um, like uh, a lot of happiness and emotional contentness comes from really it comes from violence, hunting. I've never gone hunting in my life, but I love shooting guns, um, playing music, um, talking to women, fighting, getting beaten up, beating people up in the ring, of course. Very very amateur. I, I'm not a professional at all, but it's just that's yeah, part of being a man, and you'll be a lot more happier for it. Men shouldn't, and that's like that's part of testosterone, you know. If you're sitting indoors under artificial light, smoking weed, masturbating, and playing video games, you're going to be fucking depressed, like, and that's like a big emotional problem. And there's not enough therapy and habituation in the world which is going to make you throw your Xbox out the window or whatever the thing is that you use. My tinnitus. My tinnitus flares up a lot every couple of months. Would it help to get uh, cognitive brain training therapy or some sort of therapy? Well, let me ask you this. Uh, how much of my advice have you applied and for how long? I mean, I'm not against it. The only, the only thing is when it comes to habituation and cognitive brain retraining and, and CBT, the only reason that I would be, the only instance in which I would be against it is if, a doctor gave a, you know their patient a prognosis that the tinnitus is for life, and uh, they prescribed CBT and habituation is the only option, because that's ridiculous. It's preposterous. It's not true. It flares up to an eight or nine every couple of months for a couple of weeks, and then it's down to a two out of ten. Hmm. Is there anything you're doing? which can affect that like traveling or work schedule or diet or partying. I found that a diet that includes lots of vegetables and lean protein reduces the ringing. Great. Okay. Well, that's great. Whatever works for you is fantastic. I would put to you, however, that you might be when you include the, the meat, if you're including lots of fat, sorry, if you're including lots of fat, if you're eating um, carbohydrates and fat in the same dish or even in the same day, you're turning on the Randall cycle, which is an inflammatory response, which basically leads to inflammation, which is not good. You can look at Bart K for more stuff on that. And you might have gallstones. I'm not saying like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Because if it's working, it's working. That's amazing. So just, but just so you know, that's my opinion on that. Now take what you've got there with the, the vegetables and lean protein. If that works for you, and now go do everything else. The sunlight, cold temperature, hot temperature, muscle release, meditation, exercise, movement, and uh, you know, good stuff. Really, that's absolutely fantastic. Get your ass to Missouri and I'll take you on my farm. We can go shoot all the animals you want. I would love to shoot some animals right in the face. That'd be great. I love shooting guns, man. I love it. I was shooting at a... a um, in Thailand, though, it's, it's great because in, um, you know, when I lived in Albania in Thailand, they don't, when you go to a shooting range, they're like, which gun do you want? And they give you the gun and the ammo and it's like, just be safe. <laughs> they don't do like, oh, well, let's look at this video and here's, you know, it's like, that's just for morons who like point guns at their friends and it's like, well, you probably deserve to be dead anyway. So, but in Thailand, it's like, they give you this huge book of like shotguns and handguns and like, do you want like a Colt 45? You want like uh, something semi-automatic? You want a sniper rifle? It's so much fun. I go there with my friends and just blow shit up all day. It's great. And I always wear hearing protection too. I have hyperacusis and tinnitus. Are they connected? So in my opinion on that one, I believe that they're not necessarily causally related. Like, you know, causally is in, well, if I get a cut and I don't treat it, I'm going to get an infection and that infection is because of the cut. I wouldn't have it otherwise. I don't think they have a relationship like that. What I do think is that they're both simultaneously caused by the same underlying problem, which is mitochondrial dysfunction. And mitochondrial dysfunction is caused by not enough sunlight, not enough grounding, too much EMF, too much stress, um, even loneliness. Like, this is actually a big thing that I've been thinking about recently with, um, sorry, this is a big thing I've been thinking about with, um, you know, people I, I help is, uh, you know, you can, loneliness and being alone and not having, you know, people who love you and who you love them and they've got your back, that can really destroy you. It can really destroy your mental health. 
And, uh, you know, when I had tinnitus and I was alone trying to solve it myself, I definitely felt that. I mean, it's not healthy to be alone. So, um, anyway, that, uh, the point of that was you can have mitochondrial dysfunction from, from sadness and loneliness. It's very serious. So, get off the video games and, you know, go make some... I'm not saying you, I mean people in general. Get off the video games and, you know, make some friends. I bought your course, but do not remember where the recipe book is. Is there one? Is that Triumph Over Tinnitus 2 or 3? If you go to the bonuses and go to the downloads, it should be in there. Let me know if you can't find it, okay? I had a bad virus in the fall, and then since then, my left ear has been making a chirping sound. Any supplements to help boost viral flare? Yes, actually. Um... I've got a whole list. Wormwood, colloidal silver, sage, coriander. Uh, what else? Rose hip. Are you in my course? I have a whole list that I have, but it's on my computer. I won't get it now. It's like 30 different supplements. There's a really good, there's a really good one I forget the name of. Because it actually, the way viruses work is they bind to the to a cellular wall using a protein, and there's a supplement you can get which gets which breaks down the protein and the um, the the viral the viral particle actually gets pushed into the extracellular matrix, destroyed by the immune system, and then the, the remains get pushed out uh, through your skin. It's like it's called like oh, I'll have to look it up for you. MP MP forty. That's not it. That's a gun, but yeah. Okay, good question. If tinnitus is curable, then why do doctors say it's not curable? Great question. So when we're saying doctors here, we're talking about otolaryngologists, ENTs, we're talking about GPs, we're talking about researchers, we're talking about epidemiologists. You have to understand that basically the entire medical system of the world has been totally taken over by the pharmaceutical industry. If you, if anyone watching this has been looking at what's been going on in the world for the last three years, and you still don't think that the people who run the pharmaceutical industries of the world are complete psychopaths, and that they're very powerful, and that they own doctors all around the world, like basically all of them, and they own medical universities, and they own medical establishments, you don't think that's going on, you need your fucking head checked. So, doctors and ENTs will say that tinnitus is for life, not because that they can point to anything that says that it isn't, or is, but because that's what they were told in medical school. Guys, you have to understand, doctors aren't edgy, and look, I get it, you know, I love, ENTs now watch me and follow me, and they hi guys, how you doing? There's two types of doctors. There's two types of doctors and there's two types of ENTs. Let's do the doctors first. You have your trauma response doctors, you, in Australia you have your microparamedics, you have your ambos, your ambulance drivers, you have the heroes. If I get in a car accident or I get stabbed or I get poisoned, I'm gonna need a doctor and an emergency room doctor to save my fucking life, otherwise I'm dead. They're amazing, they're incredible. The second type of doctor is a type of doctor where you make an appointment, you, wake a, you wait a week, you go in there, you speak, to, you, you try to tell them the last two months of your life in five minutes and they give you a fucking thing of cream and say, get the hell out of here. Those doctors are a joke, those doctors are a joke. If anyone thinks that those doctors ask, the second doctors actually give a solitary fuck about your health, most of them, you're delusional. So those are the first two types of doctors. The second two types of doctors are the ones, um, the ENTs. And I give this example all the time, but I say it again because it's so good. There's a type of ENT who does care about you, truly, and there's a type of ENT who doesn't care about you. And I've had experiences with both. And guess what? Between those two ENTs, the one who did care and the ones who didn't care, my results never changed. You know why? Because they're still an ENT and they still go through the same education system. And that education system is still paid for by companies who treat medical universities as a fucking investment and they write their, look, look we're gonna give you $100 million this year. We just wanna rewrite your curriculum a little bit and make sure you spend the money well. And the dean is going like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna buy like a bloody Rolls Royce, fantastic. And they do it because, you know, people are greedy, unfortunately. People are people. And they do it all over the world. If you think your university isn't the same, you need to get your head checked. And they do that. 
And then those doctors, you know, they go to high school, they study science, they study hard, they do medicine for six years, they do a specialty for two years. Then they got a $300,000 debt and then all of a sudden, you know, they're pumping through patients and making as much money as they can. Even if they think they're helping, they're not. And if they realize two years into being a doctor that they're actually not helping anyone, guess what? You still have that fucking huge debt over your head that you need to pay off or you'll go bankrupt. You will, or you'll go to jail, okay? So you have to keep doing the stuff you want to do. And if you try to tell your, your patients, oh, you know, don't worry about this medication, just change your lifestyle. Guess what? A medical board will fucking sue you and take your license away. So the whole thing is just totally fucked up on purpose, on purpose. And then someone's going to tell me, oh, Liam, you're not an ENT. You can't talk about tinnitus. No, I'm not an ENT, which is why I can talk about tinnitus because I don't need the money. I'm not soulless, okay? And I could give a fuck what people have to say about me. So that's why I'm doing what I do. That's why I have the most successes in the world. And that's why I work with famous sports stars and politicians and um, actors and musicians. And I truly do because they go to the ENTs and figure out pretty fucking quickly there's no help. That's pretty, you know, there you go. My blood test came back and it came back normal eating mostly meat <laughs> vegans be like angry yeah i know i know a specific class of antibiotics can damage mitochondria yes gentamicin um quinolones those sorts of things um i mean look every single pharmaceutical drug on the planet is toxic to the to the nervous system georgia e pointed that out too so some are more autotoxic than others but yeah i mean look Amoxicillin is probably the one I would go for as if I was going to get sick, but um, you know it is what it is. They save lives. Don't get don't get that twisted. They they're definitely essential for life. <laughs> My flare up started after COVID and also after the vaccines. Yeah, well the vaccines would definitely do it. I mean, look, if you've taken the vaccine and you said vaccines plural. That's a whole nother kettle of fish. I mean, that stuff is, it's not good. You can, I've, I've silenced many people's ears who've taken the vaccine, but it's gonna take a bit of time, right? But it can be done. <sighs> After I got silenced, why my tinnitus came back, is it normal? I mean, I'm gonna need a little bit more information than that, you know, because if you get silenced and then you go back to your old ways, um, then that makes sense. And some people, before they get complete silence, you know, they, they work hard, they get silence. Then after a week, it comes back, it kind of goes in and out, in and out, and then eventually it just stays gone. So I just need a little bit of more information. Would love to find out what antiviral breaks down the protein the virus binds to. Will you update us when you remember the name of it? Yes, maybe I can get my, you know what? Just because I love you guys so much. I'll do it now. Just give me a second to turn this thing on. <laughs> Debt is modern day slavery. Yep, certainly is. Yeah, that's the thing. Once I, once I silenced my tinnitus, um, I just lost faith in everything. And I started looking into like, you know, what the police really do, what banks really are, what tax really is. It's all a fucking joke. But people love their enslavement, don't they? Unfortunately. Unfortunately for the rest of us who just want to be left the fuck alone. Okay. I'm just getting this supplement for you. Ah, oh, fuck, it's not logged in. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I know a famous person who worked with you. It's Coldplay. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, I've worked with many, many famous musicians um, from some of the world's most famous bands. I've worked with politicians who 
um, run states, uh, I won't say which country, but you know, like run the entire state. Um, I've worked with people who are worth 50, 100 million dollars. I've worked with rich people, poor, black, white, everything. So, you know, and people say, well, Liam, you know, if you were so good at this, then, you know, you all, you would work with all these famous people. I do, but they're famous, so they don't want me to say anything about it. You know, some are like, oh, whatever, if you, if you want to, but it's like, nah, just, it's okay, man. Like, you know, and men and women, you know, so some of the most famous, and I'm saying this not so like, oh, wow, look at Liam, he's so cool. No, people think, you know, when you're a famous musician or you're a billionaire or you're a, you're a powerful politician, that you get access to like these amazing cures. And to be honest, it is kind of like that to an extent. Like if you had cancer, I wouldn't want to go to the NHS. I'd want to have the money to fly to like Dubai or something and pay like a million dollars for the best thing. Although to be honest, if I had cancer, I wouldn't be doing any of that, but that's the story for another time. These famous people have the same thing. The only difference when it comes to tinnitus between famous people and rich people and us is that they spent a million dollars to figure out that doctors couldn't help them. And people like us spent $5,000 or $2,000 in my case. That's the only difference. So they just have more money to sadly waste. But then they come to me and yeah, I've, it's cool. I've gotten cool gifts from, you know, famous singers and signed stuff and it's very cool. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty cool life if I do say so myself. I mean, I'm not gonna pretend we're friends, we're not, but it's still cool. Okay, the supplement, the supplement. is called I just saw it where did it go HP enzymes let me just let me just make sure that's right here it is here it is Digestive enzyme HP90V. That's really good for viruses. Speak to your doctor before you do anything, okay? Really, I'm not, I'm being serious. Speak to your fucking doctor before you do anything. It's your choice what you do with your body, okay? You're welcome. Okay, let's keep going. I got demotivated. You can see how hot it is in Thailand, huh? I got very demotivated after the ENT said this is chronic, even if I had a quiet a few weeks. ENT prescribed a diuretic to reduce the possibility of, of an inflammation that might be causing T. A diuretic, so he wants to make you urinate it out, basically. He wants to increase the filtration rate in your kidneys, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Is ginger tea good for tinnitus sufferers? I'd probably go sage, homemade. I took an ultrasound abdomen. I don't have gallstones, but I still suffer from indigestion, bro. Please help. Um, yeah, man, as I said before, um, galls, well, I didn't say this, but gallstones don't always show up. But if you have indigestion, it could be what you're eating and it could be parasites. So check that stuff out. All right. Well, we've had a great live stream today, guys. And uh, again, I want to thank you again for coming on my live stream, asking you some great questions. Uh, I want to thank you again for the birthday wishes. I turned 30 uh, two days ago. Yeah, okay. So, thank you very much. I love you all. I'm going to go do some boxing and get punched in the face. It's awesome. I actually love it. And yeah, can I keep taking protein and creatine supplements while having tinnitus? Just eat steak, man. I mean, look, like I'm, you can do it if you exercise and you sleep and eat well. I mean, it's up to you. Look, I'm 194 centimeters and I weigh 105 kilos. So I'm basically slim muscle all over my body. It's a great look. The ladies love it. But you know, if you want to be a big bodybuilder, like huge, I don't know if that's the healthiest choice. It's your life, but it's up to you. 
Jamie says, same, my ENT put me on diuretics and steroids and it almost killed me. Yeah, see, I wouldn't think that's a good fucking idea. That just seems like they're giving you something so you fuck off, really. Thank you for your precious time. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. Happy birthday, bro. Thank you. So this is a great comment here. You guys have, you have given it more time. It's been almost a year for me. It's literally almost gone. Please be patient. So it can take time, guys, and that's okay. You know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that because it's not like you have a year of nothing happening and then it goes. It's a year of usually just this. You know, a little bit of tweaking in there, a little bit of help from Liam. Uh, you know, so I'm here to help, guys. Happy belated birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you won't believe it, but I convinced that tonight sufferer, <laughs> tonight is sufferer United guy. Yeah, I worry about that guy, to be honest. I mean, look, for those of you who don't know, I've got a, let's just call him my number one fan who really doesn't like me for some reason. And I'm kind of worried about him. I mean, he makes videos to say like, you know, Liam Bohm is a scammer and he's a terrible person or whatever. Like people can do what they want, but you know. I don't, I don't mind when people say they hate me, but the only problem is that when people make videos like that and they make posts like that, which are not founded in anything and it's just an outright lie, then what happens is when someone has, let's say someone has tinnitus, we'll end this live stream soon. Let's say someone has tinnitus and then they go and um, they go to the ENT and they spend a year trying to find help and nothing will help them. And then they, they're lucky enough to stumble across my YouTube channel. And I really mean my, you know, that, that is luck. I know it's arrogant, but it's very good for them, you know. And then they find me, oh my God, look at this guy. I think he can help me. It makes sense. And then they go and find like a gentleman like that guy, tonight is sufferer, that guy. They find this YouTube channel and, um, you know, basically it's just like, you know, fuck Liam, he's an asshole. It's like, oh, whatever. But to say I'm a scammer is, you know, not accurate and it's really not something you should be saying online because it's pretty sure it's libel by the way so you get what's happened is you're going to dishearten that person whether it's a, it's a post on instagram or a post on a forum and then that person is going to go oh damn it like i thought this guy liam was legit but i guess he's a scammer so i won't apply his advice and then that person's life is fucked and then they're going to have tonight it's forever and that's happened i've had people email me recently because i've been doing this for five years guys i've been around the block you know people know my name and um um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, people know my name and, uh, you know, they know who I am and they come to me a lot. And unfortunately in the past, what happens is, you know, I had people come to me and say, yeah, Liam, I found you three years ago, four years ago, whatever. And I was going to apply your advice, but then I saw like a post about you or a video about you, um, basically saying how you're a scammer and you never had tinnitus and all this, this is dog shit. You know, one thing that really pisses me off is when people say I never had tinnitus because I nearly fucking killed myself and I became addicted to drugs and alcohol and I lost three and a half years of my life. So thank you very much for that shit. And then they don't, they didn't apply my advice. They had tinnitus for an additional two years when they should have just gotten rid of it. Then they said, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I'm just going to follow Liam's advice. They follow my advice, they get silence and then they're very angry that they ever listened to those people who were just running their mouths. So anyway, if you convinced him, that's great. I hope that he, you know, he seemed very angry. He, I'm sure he's suffering. I, I, I wish him the best. I hope he does well. And uh, yeah, I hope he gets silenced because, uh, you know, even even people like that who are, you know, not the nicest of people, but that's okay. Even people like that don't really deserve to have tinnitus because it's hell. So if I know you, that guy's probably watching now. I wish you the best. And if you need help, you can contact me. Is tinnitus caused by TMJ, rever TMJ reversible? Yes, um, you wanna know the best solution to TMJ that I've ever found in my life? You ready for this? Stop eating oxalates. There you go. All right, love you too, man. Happy birthday, thank you. It's been 1.5 years for me, it's almost gone, but still working on it, great, amazing. Opinion on LDN. Yeah, so I spoke about this before, Amy. Um, with LDN, yeah, I'm, I'm not against it at all. Sure, if you want to do it, ask your doctor and yeah, sure. So blessed I found you. Um, I was talking to him for ages. I can, I can, no, I, I don't want to see the conversation. That's okay. I don't, I don't really want to get, I, I appreciate that very much, by the way. And if he did change his mind, I really, really appreciate that. 
But um, that, that, I, that's okay. I, I don't want to get involved in the arguments and the people like, you know, I, I kind of treat it like this. And I, you, you comment on my post all the time and I really appreciate that. You're awesome. But I kind of look at it like this, you know, I don't really want to convince anyone to do my advice. If someone doesn't want to do it or they don't believe it, that's fine. If they don't believe it, I wish him the best, you go on with your life. If somebody doesn't want to do it or doesn't believe that it works, you know, I'm not going to convince him. It's like, okay, there's all these people over there. You know, there's a hundred people over here who need my help and believe it and want to do it. I'll focus on them. But the people over here, um, you know, the one person over here who's like very vocal and, and doesn't want to do it, I'll let them do their thing. But thank you very much, man or, or ma'am for doing this. I really, really appreciate that because I know for a fact that a lot of, a lot of the people whose tinnitus I silence, um, you know, it comes because they're like, yeah, my friend like convinced me to follow your advice or I didn't believe you. And then my friend said it worked for them. So you're doing really good stuff, really. So thank you a lot, seriously. Uh, any advice for specific earplugs that reduce outside sounds? Uh, musicians earplugs are quite good, the high quality ones. Yeah, you can still go to a party with earplugs, that's fine. The glasses suit you, thank you very much. Okay, we'll end it here. This has been an awesome, awesome live talk. My eardrum pops or, pops or cracks when swallowing or yawning, can you explain it? In my experience, it's usually a mineral deficiency like copper and magnesium or it's oxalate toxicity. Okay, we're gonna end it here. I love you all very, very much. And I'll put this live stream on my Instagram page so you can rewatch it and my YouTube channel. All right, love you guys. Bye-bye, bye-bye.